which has been overcome by the U.S. government. So this is the first well in the area. It's a wildcat well. Our main objective is to drill down to a depth of 2,500 meters in 25 days, which the ops guys tell me is doable. Prospecting for oil is like fishing in a pond. Initially, it's easy to catch uh, the fish, but over time, as you're going after uh, the fish that are deeper down, uh, you have to be more and more patient because there are fewer fish and they're lying in the deeper water and they're harder to get at. So effectively, when you look into the oil industry, that means going to the ends of the earth to try and find the remaining barrels. This, region. Um, this is a sample reservoir rock at the surface from my field work. Next, the Cretaceous canning formation. The upper shells of these form the seal holding the oil in the lower sands of the target reservoir. We expect the reservoir sand section to be more than 200 meters thick. The target that big, you hardly need a drilling program. Mm. Um, holding a potential four billion barrels of oil. You could pick a spot with your eyes shut. Alan! Run! 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 So, if you'd like to put your 3D specs on, we'll take a closer look at the structure of the seismic data to view the prospect. So, our main target is in this thrust zone here. As you can see, it's part of a complicated zone with several faults, which we must avoid. Because of the fault zones, our target tolerance is very small. It's 50 meters. How many cores are in the program? Well, I'd like to core the entire reservoir, but... Um, given my budget, I'm limited to four. We've got to hit a 50-metre spot. 50, yes. <laughs> Your call. <laughs> Anwar might produce in a positive scenario one, one and a half million barrels a day. That's about 2% of the overall oil market. And it's less than our increase in demand over the next five years. Anwar's not going to solve the problem. It's one small part, potentially, of the solution, but a part that comes at great environmental cost. Thank God you're here. You're not scared, are you? Of what? The idiot with the... Pencil? They think this is the next giant oil field. No, they don't. They think this is the last giant oil field. In the last untouched corner of America. These are desperate men. Oil rigs are full of desperate men. So what do you reckon? You heard? Four billion barrels? At least. I can't believe we're finally going back. And this time with 40 men and a 36 million dollar budget. There's no easy oil left in the world. Geologists are basically scouring the parts of the planet that nobody really goes to in search for the last remaining sizable oil reserves. And that's why places like the Arctic, Alaska, the very deep water in the oceans are typically areas geologists will currently look. So glad you're sitting this well for me. Well, we're a good team. I'm relying on you to keep the wolves at bay. Listen, if the Inuits are happy and we got round the environmentalists, then I'm sure the wolves will just roll over. When you speak to the oil companies, they do try to reassure you that there's a lot of oil out there. But the truth of it is, actually, people misrepresent their reserves all the time for political reasons or commercial reasons. So even when people say we think there's lots of oil out there, we don't actually know that they're telling the truth. As the price of oil stays high or even continues to rise, the first event would be natural gas prices would start to go up and electricity prices would start to go up. So you might start to see the infrastructure networks start to break down and eventually you would get to the point where only very localized products could be guaranteed to be fresh and in the supermarket on a frequent basis. Hey John, 
$5.49 for a melon. Who pays $5.49 for a melon? When our daughter visits, she's going to have all her favorite things. She's only going to be here for two hours. It's not all for Jessica. What are you going to do? Liquidize it and, and, and feed it to her intravenously? Intravenously. I'm stocking up. Powdered milk. I am not going to drink powdered milk. There is no fresh milk. You try to put that in my coffee, I'm not drinking it. You won't know the difference. One of the consequences of energy costs going up is that business will start slowing down. You'd start seeing people making less profits. You'd start seeing uh, lower levels of economic activity. And whether it's a recession, or whether it's a, d a depression, depends really on how sharp the oil price increase is and also on how the government responds to it. Hey News Radio AM 970 weather. Bundle up tonight, it's going to be cold. Overnight low, 21. Coming up in News Briefing, there's no end in sight to surging gas prices. In the last eight weeks, oil has risen over 50% on global markets. And nobody's predicting when the run is going to slow down. In business, China signs a massive oil for trade deal with Saudi Arabia. I thought you should hear this from the horse's mouth. I'm gonna have to stand down half the fleet. More than half the fleet. Well, what about the contracts? We're just keeping the big one with the Superstore. So I'm still driving? You're all right, John. That's only four trucks. I'm standing down the other six, letting the contracts go. Laying the drivers off? There's no other answer. Is there? Britain could see a return to 1973 as the government considers ways to conserve fuel stocks. It's thought some form of rationing and speed restrictions are being considered. In 1973, Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Yamani in particular, played a crucial role in redefining the oil system. During 1973 and 1974, with the Yom Kippur War, um, OPEC, or the leading Middle Eastern states, uh, decided at that time uh, with Sheikh Khamenei to uh, restrict the exports of oil to the countries that were behind Israel um, in the war. That led to oil supply to the West slowing dramatically and queues at petrol stations. I think America has two columns for their policy in the Middle East, Israel and oil. And the two were all right until 73. That's the first time when there was a clash between the two. And from then, they started a new policy. And then they found that there should be other sources. Russia is not the answer. The answer was Iraq. How am I going to keep warm with no one to hold on to? Get a parka like mine. You might look a bit silly around the flight in one of those. Turn the stat up. It's the answer to everything, that, isn't it? Boredom, wealth, stupidity. More power. You know, this might be as bright as it gets. And perhaps, gradually or not so gradually, all the lights will start to go out. And we'll look back and think how profligate it would be. Is your giant oil field going to keep all these lights going? Might do. For a few decades. A growing number of developing countries, India and China first and foremost, are demanding first world developed country levels of oil consumption. And that means that we're going to be in a world where...